getting immersed in these mountains. There's a lot of this alpine mountain hiking, sometimes foggy sitting around the fireplace feeling. Beautiful morning, friends. <laughs> Each and every day, I'm like, this place is so beautiful. Being immersed in these mountains, and at the same time, like everything is so lush, so green, so tropical, so vibrant. It's like, it's not like the Bali that people know that is like busy and full of construction and like incredible amounts of tourists. That's like the real Bali. Sometimes I describe this place as a mix between Bali and Austria. <laughs> There's a lot of this alpine mountain hiking, sometimes foggy sitting around the fireplace feeling. And there's a lot of this green tropical Bali lushness incredible amounts of fruits and like right now it's the Balinese summer it's the dry season July August there's almost no rain even in those like elevated oh the sun is so beautiful even in those elevated regions and at the same time it's way less hot than in the lower regions where you need to shower like four times a day when people tell me like oh I've been to Bali or India or Thailand or whatever and I cannot live in the tropics this is not the tropics this is the tropics and at the same time this is Austria it's like a mix between both it's warm but it's not hot it's fresh but it's not cold it's tropical and it's mountains it's like the best of both worlds This mountain river is so fresh, I can tell you. Whoa. And it's so clean, you can drink from it. Like, this is not possible anywhere else in Bali. Ooh. Hallelujah. We are currently on an altitude of almost 900 meters. Yes, it's visible. <laughs> we are enjoying the most beautiful view all over the island. It looks a little bit foggy. That's not the case. You can see all the way to the south. A place where I've been a couple of days ago. And I showed you the pretty dry vegetation down there. Like close to the beach, there's a lot less rain. It's even so dry that water needs to be imported by trucks. It's not even really green. It's more like light green slash brownish. And when you look at that, like that, in each and every direction, it's just green. It's just like so lush, so vibrant. All the eye can see like down there and up there too. You currently you don't see the mountain because the house is in the way. But up there is Mount Patucaro, protected forest of Mount Patucaro with an area of t almost 12,000 hectares. Ensures that not only for a long time there will be a lot of beautiful greenery for our eyes to witne witness, but even more important, there will be fresh, clean air to breathe. It's 
distance trees, like those trees that gift us with these beautiful mangoes or all the other abundant green, lush, vibrant trees, they purify the air. ChatGPT, why are trees important for clean air? Trees are vital for clean air because they absorb carbon dioxide and release oxygen through the process of photosynthesis. They also filter pollutants from the air, such as sulfur dioxide, ammonia, and nitrogen oxides. Additionally, trees trap dust, pollen, and smoke, helping to improve air quality and overall health. Thank you. We humans are designed to live where trees live. Trees are our best friends. They care for us unconditionally each and every day. <laughs> we just <laughs> we just need to resist cutting them. That's everything we need to do. If we don't cut a tree, they will nourish us for the rest of our times with clean air, with shade, with delicious yumminess. Like <laughs> Yeah. And if because of a storm the tree fell. They still serve us as the new tables for our loved ones to gather, for our whole families to enjoy. This video really shocked me. Look at this. Fifty percent of the world's forests have been cut. Can you imagine this? Fifty percent already. tropical tree cover the size of 40 football fields is lost. Since we started watching this video, 80 football fields have been cut. Each tree is unique, like each human being. They are unique. Even calling them a tree makes them replaceable because it's one tree, that's another tree, okay, it's just a tree. No, it's not just a tree, it's a being, like we are. Really like seeing cut trees, like huge piles of cut trees as you sometimes see like in the forest. Hurts me. Hurts me. Have you ever taken the time to observe how unique each tree looks? Like they have skin like we as humans are. Our fingerprints are unique and like each tree is unique and they are not only one being, they are multiple beings. Look, there are ants and little beetles and moss and some leaves, some vines. Like even this one, look at that. It's even more abundant. <laughs> what is growing on? What is growing on here? Like one, two, three, four, five, six, countless other species on this one tree. 
it's not even fair to call it a tree because it's like this and that and that. Cutting that not only cuts a single living being, it cuts a whole ecosystem. And that's the reason why a hundred years ago the Balinese tiger went extinct. Because with the trees go the little beetles and with the little beetles go these animals that that f like eat the little beetles and then like the bigger ones go and then the bigger ones go and then the end the tiger goes. Because yeah, it doesn't have enough food and enough broad enough, vast enough area to roam around and to find like what he truly needs. So we cannot just cut the trees, we kill the whole ecosystem with it and in the end like the last domino piece that will fall might be us human beings because we have no clean air anymore to breathe and yeah everything is interconnected. And observing trees like this <laughs> always connects me with this interconnectedness and makes me appreciate it so much. <laughs> Just finished Castoria Preneur's group coaching session. Mm. <laughs> Topic that is very present right now as we are recording episode 36 and that was present in the coaching session too is that real real greatness comes through practice. And especially with content creation, many people have this assumption of like, okay, let me practice, let me be become so good at making videos, doing podcasts, sharing my message, whatever it is that I practice and then I go out into the world. While in reality, I believe like none of the videos I already published is like, is where I see those videos like potentially and still I create. Today's video is not as great as I think I will do videos in the future, but it's an important piece, an important step on the path. Yeah. Just to go out, just to do, just to like one step at a time, just to create. And tomorrow we create again, and then we create again, and then we create again. And this not only leads to us, becoming so much better at what we are doing it's it's beautiful to be able to witness a process yeah <laughs> this all the series that that I'm watching like are documentaries when where people groups like today's video we talked a lot about football where teams got like documented over a whole season with all the ups and downs and this is what we humans want to watch like, I'm not interested I'm not interested anymore in those highly polished everything is perfect and so on no I'm interested in seeing the real story the real life the real ups and downs the real challenges and this is what I'm trying to to put out there too the path just the path Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I want to see more people doing that what I'm doing. And if this inspires you to share your to share your perspective with the world on this ongoing basis, right text me. Like I want to know that. This is what needs to be created more like the real story the behind the scenes like so many of the topics that we discussed in today's group coaching session arise because we always compare our inner world with the outer world of somebody we watch, follow them on Instagram and they post like two 
two selfies a week where they are super happy and shredded and everything is beautiful yeah if you post two selfies probably you can do that if you document document each and every day you cannot do that you can just share the real story like if you create in such a frequency you cannot share anything but the real story and this is this is what I want to see in this world <laughs> yeah the simple unglamorous but important important decisions and today feels like today was not special not fancy not crazily exciting but it was an important day where I nourished my body well where I put my gifts into the world where I rested which is very important right now because the last three weeks were really crazy and yeah another another step on the way not fancy not overly exciting just another step on the way a good step that's it and that's all it needs to be <laughs> by the way here's a youtuber who inspires me daniel dalen publishes those videos on a weekly basis. he films his whole week and then at the end of the week he shares a video like long ones current most recent video is like 42 minutes <laughs> So we're currently on our way to Shanghai. Sorry, I said that wrong. <laughs> so we're currently in Shanghai. We're on our way to the airport. We just got to Hongqiao Airport. So Great we had guy. a couple of very nice days in Shanghai. If you Great guy. I like him. He's like, he's, he's very stage orange driven. I'm building my business. Like there are many, many areas where I don't relate with him, but uh, he's an inspiration YouTube wise. Great guy. I want to see more of that. And I would love to see that on a daily basis, which of course requires a lot of dedication and commitment and focus. And <laughs> it's a major part of my life. It's definitely a major part of my life. And I enjoy it. <laughs> I enjoy it a lot. Yeah. To document this whole process and to create, really, really show the path. Like at episode 170, whatever, and we are like celebrating our new home we built custodia we built a new paradigm living space and everything is beautifully and we are like high-fiving each other i want to be able for people to go back to episode one and see how everything started and all the ups and downs and ups and downs and ups and downs i want to create a case study this is what really drives me not just the final polished result like here it is i want to document the whole path this is what drives me oh friends look at that Delicious dinner, home cooked. Mm. Quick update on my eating regimen because it's always interesting to people. I'm not um, eating fully raw vegan at the moment. I'm just following my impulses and instincts and what is available. It's still mostly raw and I, I enjoy the occasional um, vegan home home cooked goodness like here and I'm good going good with that yeah it's just like intuitive flow I always um, sense that as much unprocessed as possible like serves me the most so most of the time I still eat very lightly and then I went like this with 20, 30, 40 different ingredients is nice here and there, but it's not what I like every night. Mm. I think one, one uh, fact that contributes to that is that currently we have the dry season here in Bali, so there are not as many nice fruits, uh, for example, like no durian and no jackfruit, which was always my evening staple. Um, and since eating regional is like the holy grail that I want to consume as much as possible like from the region that was not imported from other islands or from overseas or whatever and since this is what's in season right now that in, I see that as an invitation to eat that yeah hmm. the same is true for if I would imagine I would be living in Germany in the winter I would not eat raw vegan like 
bananas and mangoes and pineapples imported from the other side of the planet, I would eat what is present there. And that would be probably potatoes or carrots or whatever. And this is one of the reasons why I live here in Bali. Because we have delicious yumminess all year round. <laughs> yeah. And after the occasional nice treat like this, all with like 100% ingredients from the local food forest, like this place, I can tell you. I need to do a tour soon and I can show you a little bit. This place is amazing. I think they have around four, five hectares, four or five hectares of food forest. They are growing like everything themselves. Like, then the next day, I'm enjoying my coconut meat, just pure, plain, simple, with a little dip. That's it. Um, all the more. <laughs> all right, enough said. Food is getting cold. <laughs> Sometimes I d something that I didn't didn't say in the past, but now I say food is getting cold. <laughs> That's it for today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for this journey on this very ordinary and beautiful and important day. <laughs> See you tomorrow.